Okay, okay go. Okay, so first you open up your body. Well, tell him what you're doing. Okay, well, I opened up this um, this file that he uh, made. We're going to print a part on the 3D printer. Yeah, that too. And I opened it up in Autodesk Fusion, it, the, and the icon looks like this. And why did we have to do that? Because the Autodesk program is weird, and every time you try to save it as an STL file, which is the what the 3D printer reads, it decides to make it very, very big, and then you have to scale it down yourself manually, and you never ever get an exact copy. So you open it up in here, and you want to make sure that your top and bottom are in the right uh, sides. So as you can see, this gray plane over here, I believe that is saying that, actually, hold on, that's the bottom. We want the, the front, and that, that's correct, because if we go to the front, yeah, it's okay. So then you go to f uh, your file, save as... Why is it okay? Oh, because the program will place it as um, on the top or the way front. It orients the way it orients it. Into, into Catalyst. Yeah, you can change it on Catalyst. It's really easy, but it's just easier if you do it on here. So, so what are we doing now? You're saving, you go to File, Save As, STL, .STL file, right there. And then you just save it on your flash drive. And it was Save Copy As. Um, it used to be save copy as. I think this is a newer version, so let's just save as. Okay. Autodesk Inventor does save copy as. So then you just go and remove your flash drive. All right. So now, Forrest, come over here and watch him. So come over here. You fire up Catalyst. On this fancy dancer laptop, you want to make sure that your 3D printer is plugged in. And it's not, it's so we got to get the blue cord. It's actually this one is plugged straight into the Ethernet port. Um, I think there's a you can just do it straight from the printer uh, if you have a different type of printer. Well, it's set up to go because it's got a um, what well, IPN yeah, yeah. set up. So you open that and you put your flash drive in. You need a platform. So yeah. while that's open, I'll, you might as well grab a okay. platform. So the platforms are down here in this little cabinet thing. Hmm? The platforms? I'm not sure how much each one is. We try to reuse them if possible. But yeah, if it sticks. So he's putting it in, it slides into the grooves, and then there's two locks. You have to make sure they're locked. Okay. Okay, so you go over here, file, open STL, and you now it should come up with this green little box, and it should have your name. And you open that and see how it came. I should have said front, top and front. But we can different. change it. Yeah, you can change it. So then you go over orientation. to orientation, and you can rotate it. 90 degrees along Y. And that would work. X axis. That would work. There you go. And you want to make sure that it's kind of, you know, your right size. So then you go over to general and you check your STL size down here. So your your X, Y, and Z should all be the same, around the same, if, if you can get it. And if it's not, then you have to go over here and do STL scale. The reason why we did Fusion is so that we don't have to mess with the STL scale. We want to do it's model interior. We want to make sure it's sparse, otherwise it's going to cost a hundred dollars to print this thing. Support material. You can do any of these really, except for uh, surround. Really, yeah, I need to get in here. No, that's all right. I just need to get in here. I typically possible. do breakaway because then it's easier to get out of the support material. Right. You want, the support material sometimes is really hard to get off. Yeah. So then you can just add to pack. You can click print straight from there, but if you add it to pack, then you can move it around the, um, right. the, the platform. And if you see, it creates these support structure hinges or overhangs. Right. And the reason why we added the pack first is because these will actually go over the platform and the printer will malfunction and or shut down when it does that. 
so. So do we need to move it at all? Oh uh, yeah, we will a little bit. Yeah, you can see how it's going outside. Right now it was it was running. So you go up here to pack, and you just click and drag it a little bit. Yeah. And then you print. Now we're going to add to this, aren't we? To this uh, yeah, if you want. Yeah, let's add some of the other parts. We might as well run. Uh, we didn't save any of the other parts. Oh, you didn't? No. Well, then let's just do the body. Okay. So then you click print, and then it'll merge the CMB files down there. And probably save it. Sending part to print. Now, what was that step you did before you hit print? I just wanted the description. Uh... What, which step? I don't know. You opened up a hun another window. Oh, no, I was just going to go. I was just searching for another STL. To see if oh, you okay. Just, gotcha. Yeah. But see, now it, it'll show on the 3D printer, it'll say ready to build body material remaining model 17 support. And we're good. So you want to, you, we only have 17 um, percent. percent of support. So you want to go to general. Or Let's actually, see how much printer status. So. The printer has 9.68 inches of model material and 48.29 inches squared of, or cubed of support. So your object is going to take 4.96 inches of model, so then you're fine. We're okay. But if this ever goes over, you have to replace yeah. your stuff. So now that you go over here and you click the start model, on that thing right there, it should say start model. And make sure it says ready to build body material remaining. Start model. And then it will warm up and find and which home. Which takes a while. Finds home and it'll warm up. The head, printer head, has to get warm about what, 237, 247 degrees? Yeah, something like that. So now it's going to go through this whole process and find home. And then once it's all done and heated up, then it should uh, start the model. And this one is scheduled to take, I think I saw six and a half hours. Yeah, six hours and 30 minutes. 39 minutes. It's a while. All right. All right, so that's the basics. So you, you wait for it to finish. You know, usually we let this run when uh, we leave class and it runs overnight. We haven't run into any problems except when someone shuts the printer off and we'll have to find our piece of paper that says, don't touch the printer. So that's the basics of running the dimension printer for our uh, Project Lead the Way classes.